morning dear students today we are going to start another topic that is dairy farming dairy farming means farming of milk yielding animals then what are the benefits of a cattle development program through the, such programs we can uh, breed selective variety according to our interest and also we can increase the milk production among various breeds and also we can cross breed with the uh, cross breed between the interested exotic breeds with the indigenous breed that by, uh, by that way we can improve the quality of the existing breeds and also such program help us to maintain the high yielding milk animals so these are the benefits then which are the major milk animals in india they are cows and buffaloes uh, india um, uh, is the main country that is farming buffaloes but there are some other countries they are farming buffaloes that include china thailand pakistan indonesia nepal myanmar etc then what are the benefits of uh, farming buffaloes over cow there are some benefits uh, buffaloes yield three times more milk than cow and also its nutrient value also uh, superior over the cow's milk and it contains 50 percentage more fat than that of cow's milk um, then by considering the buffalo bullock means that male buffalo uh, it is an animal of strength when compared with the strength of a, an ox. Okay. So, next we can uh, understand about types of animal housing that we are used to farm this cows and buffaloes. Two types exist. They are conventional barns and uh, loose barns. Barns means todutu conventional barns where we used to do farm or to care these cows and buffaloes they are of two types conventional and loose first we can learn about conventional barns its picture is shown here what is this conventional barns uh, here uh, the cows are confined confined means it is not permitted to freely move about it is confined its, move, its motion is restricted uh, by tying it to some place uh, each cow is secured each cow is secured in position using stanchions stanchions means what stanchions stanchions is image is shown here stanchions means certain up right bars upright bars used to, to tie these cows and there the cows are tied using neck chains and uh, yeah, by, uh, by keeping the cows inside this barn itself we are milking it and also feeding these cows then what are the some other features of, of this conventional bath barns it is completely roof, wall with windows and also ventilators also there in proper place. And uh, this conventional barns protect the cow from adverse climatic condition means uh, unsuitable climatic conditions. But uh, for constructing such a type of barn, it costs high. So it is becoming less popular now. Then rows, this is a term uh, that, uh, that uh, we need to understand in relation with this conventional barns. What rows? Rows means if the number of cow is less than 10, uh, we are arranging or we are tying that in a single row inside the conventional barn. Single row. So that is a uh, row. But, but while the type, the number of cow is more than 10, then we need to maintain, we need to tie them in double rows, either in facing out for or in facing in for. Then let's uh, understand what is this face out pattern of tying in double row um, uh, method or uh, um, tying them in facing way in double row method let's see that 
Face out means here face are out. Tails uh, of uh, those cows in both rows are uh, facing each other. So this is face out. Face in is, uh, is this type. Here the uh, in both rows the face of the cows are um, facing each other. So these are the two types of uh, tying the cow in, uh, in barn in double row. Okay. Uh, maximum accommodability means how many cows we can accommodate, uh, we can occupy in one barn. Uh, about 80 to 100 cows we can occupy in one barn. That's the maximum uh, maximum capacity. Then what about the floor flooring of the barn? It should be formed of some impervious material and should not slippery and also even if it, it is uh, so rough then that time uh, don't make it so difficult uh, to be clean. So while the time it is a not slippery type at the same time we, we need to give um, due attention that it should be easy to clean and dry. Uh, so, uh, the best thing is to use grooved cement concrete and it should have a slope, slope uh, from the point of manger to the excreta channel. I will explain you what is manger. So, from the manger to the excreta channel, there should be a slope. So, manger means it is that feeding space. Uh, usually, yes, in some barn cities, it is um, made using woods, and so in some barns, it is uh, considered using cement, concrete. So, anyway, it is a place where we uh, put feed for the cows. So, that is manger. From the manger towards the excreta channel, excreta channel uh, be always uh, seen in the um, in the back uh, the back most region of that uh, barn and so that's why manger will be uh, present here so from the manger towards the excreta channel there should be a slope of 1 to 1.5 inch so that's one then floor space what should be the space uh, we need to allot for one cow for one cow there should be 65 to 70 square feet a square feet space should be there. Then coming to walls. The in, inner side of the wall should be smooth, hard finish of cement. Because if it is rough, then there is more chance to accommodate more dust and make it difficult to clean. So, the wall should be smooth. And corners should be round corners. So, all those things are... Um, consider I mean, all the all those things we are maintaining inside the shed only to uh, make the cleaning uh, procedure easy. So next about the roof, mainly asbestos sheet or tiles. Tiles means clay tiles are using to make the roof, and uh, um and uh, uh, better to avoid corrugated iron sheet. This is iron sheet. Why we are avoiding, why it is telling that it's better to avoid this iron sheet. Uh, because this iron sheet make extreme temperature fluctuations throughout seasons inside the barn. That is not good for the cow. Then what is stall? Stall means uh, that, uh, that so, sorry, the space allotted for each cow. Uh, separate discrete space are there. And uh, one stall occupy one cow and uh, while keeping the cow inside the stall itself, we are giving it uh, space for resting and also feeding and also we are milking and watering whatever uh, thing we are giving to cow. Uh, we used to do all things while uh, keeping the cow in the stall, in its own stall. Then manger, manger I already explained to you, it is a concrete continuous uh, uh, channel like space where we used to uh, put the feed of the cow. Once more I am showing uh, this manger. Uh, sometimes this manger has some removable partitions also. 
according to if we prefer to uh, give uh, different types of feed that time we can use some removable partitions also and mangers are of high front manger low front mangers are there high front means its height will be um, high when compared with the low front it's a uh, high front um, be uh, a high height of one feet to four inch low front uh, have a height of six to nine inch anyway high front manger is more advisable because it avoid the uh, wastage of feed then manual gutter manual gutter means that excreta channel that also i have already shown you before this is the excreta channel it's almost uh, placed in the back towards the back of that uh, barn uh, back of the uh, each row each row of that cow so it should be wide um, why it should be wide means only then uh, it can avoid blockage and uh, and also facilitate easy cleaning and there are there should be some other facilities inside a barn uh, it, it should have calving box calving box means it has some special shelter inside uh, to give care to the young ones calving box this is the calving box isolation box means if we uh, if we are interested to incorporate a new breed then we can keep them in isolation box and observe is, is it having any disease or uh, what about its milk yielding and uh, like that so many um, uh, aspects so many um, features we can uh, understand by keeping uh, that uh, breed that cow in isolation box and also uh, an ideal barn should uh, should contain some sheds for young stocks and also there should be some special separate area for bull bull sheds so these are about the conventional barn next is loose housing loose as the name indicates here uh, there is no confinement or restriction for the cattle uh, it means keeping cows loose in an open patlow court pasture means it's an open wide area a grassy area that give uh, full freedom for the cow to uh, walk here and there and to graze so that it is that much free and only during night sorry only during the time of milking they are tied so all the other time they are free to uh, roam about in that area in that padlock or pasture so that is loose housing loose and uh, even though it is an open area there will present a shelter on one side and that shelter can be used by the animals in extreme climates extreme hot or when it is rain so uh, that's about the loose housing loose housing is which picture also i will show you which uh, this is a loose housing a uh, large open area a uh, grazing uh, space also there and all, all, uh, in one side uh, there will present some shed here also we can see that shed in one side all the other area open it is uh, uh, guarded by a fencing and a gate so what are the features is cost is cost for construction is very low and we can expand whenever if uh, uh, we want to expand the area uh, because of the uh, because of more number of cows so that also possible in the case of loose housing um, without uh, uh, without uh, the requirement of much change and also we can detect animals very easily in this loose housing and also animals feel free they can graze whenever they want uh, and also they will get optimum exercise through walking it can walk throughout that padlock so that will give optimum exercise for the cows and by that way keep them healthy and what are the other facilities there should be some area for uh, milking milking for milking purpose there should be some uh, special area and there there will present some store rooms for feeding its uh, so, sorry for storing its feeds and for uh, there, there will be some calf pens. Calf pen means there is uh, some areas for uh, uh, look uh, for uh, carrying the calves, and also uh, there should be some arrangement for uh, feeding 
uh, a manger should be there drinking area uh, loafing means uh, freely uh, um, roaming about roam about area also should be there then uh, water trough also should be there then uh, regarding that shed uh that should uh, its floor should be cemented or brick paved but should be uh, easy to clean and uh, it should not be slippery drainage should be uh, shallow uh, and uh, it should uh, have uh, sufficient slope and also that uh, drainage should be uh, covered with removable tiles because the cows are free they are freely moving here and there so there is a chance that they get trapped inside or they they may fell into this drain so it should be covered with removable tiles roofing uh, can be done by corrugated cement sheet or asbestos asbestos or uh, uh, bricks mean that means uh, concrete or rafters rafters also rafters means this one uh, also um, uh, that also do, um, doing in some uh, situations then boundary wall boundary wall means uh, we have seen in the former picture that the entire area is covered by some fencing some fencing uh, will be there and its height should be five feet and there will present a gate and a manger also uh, will be there uh, sufficiently spaced manger should be there and uh, uh, there will present a calf shed on one side of the main cattle shed i, I have uh, shown you in that in the main picture on one side there present a uh, cattle shed and uh, on the one side of that main cattle shed there should pr uh, present a calf shed an area special area to uh, care uh, the calves it should be fully covered and uh, adjacent to that there uh, will be present an open area for uh, for entertaining the free movement of the calves in that area and altogether the total area requirement for constructing a loose housing is more that is only uh, only means hard thing uh, when combined with the confined barn. It requires more area for uh, accommodating 200 adult cows. It requires 2 to 3 acres of land. So that's about the loose housing. Next is about the advantages of dairy. Uh, first advantage is that it fits well in diversified way. It has diversified scope. Uh, diversified scope means uh, while running a farm uh, along with uh, along with that we can utilize the farm labor its far, uh, buildings its equipments in so many ways um, um, that means along with we are uh, while we are selling its products we can do direct marketing and also sometimes we can do uh, agri tourism agri tourism means we can uh, attract tourists tourists to the farmland uh, and uh, we can exhibit the equipments or uh, different types of equipments there if, uh, by all those way we can earn some income so so many diversified so many uh, ramified scopes are there in farming programs milk animals these milk animals they are efficient consumers of ravages ravages are actually those remnants of uh, grains cereals that cannot be digested by our body uh so even then uh, otherwise it will become a waste this milk animals are uh, a very efficient in consuming this roughages and also almost all the different types of dairy products it, it will yield a stable income why because price for almost all dairy products are almost stable there is not much search or dip and so that and also the income we could generate out of the dairy it is distributed distributed throughout the year I mean, uh, that means it, it doesn't i mean that uh, it uh, its income could be generated only a certain period of uh, year uh, only by the end or middle um, time of an year it's not like that we will get a continuous stable income throughout the year so that is another uh, advantage along with that it will improve our, our family diet and uh, we are getting a very good uh, nutritious uh, food uh, by that way it reduce our food cost family food cost so that is another advantage 
then uh, talking about skim milk skim milk means uh, the milk that is uh, uh, free of milk fat uh, milk fat removed milk that is skim milk it is a, a valuable um, feed for poultry as well as swine swine so means pig pig feed uh, so by that way uh, that farmers can uh, um, they can earn income out of selling dairy product as well as the skimmed skimmed uh, milk fat that milk fat also they can sell so in all way in all aspects it is profitable and this skim milk is a, a rich source of protein minerals and vitamins and this farming maintains soil fertility how because uh, that dairy farm that yard it is highly fertile so uh, legumes and the grass grow very well as it grows well then it holds the soil and conserve the soil by that way it increases soil fertility uh, which in the soil fertility that uh, dairy farm then certain limitations also there uh, which are the limitations it require high labor labor uh, high labor is required for, uh, for this dairy farming sector and also a good capital is uh, is uh, required to set a good farm and also along with all these things uh, always these dairy animals they are uh, in uh, in the face of so many infections and diseases that that also uh, is a great threat in the dairy farming and in uh, nowadays in the market uh, so many substitutes for dairy products are available and that also uh, is a backlash for uh, our da dairy dairy related products and its marketing so these are the limitations with this i uh, am going to wind up today's class and section thank you Fuck her in the best yeah.